Hey everybody and welcome to the Viper Magic YouTube channel's Bethesda E3 Reaction 2017. I am not your host, Jim Afanis. My name is Brent Casina. I'm from the BK's Bullets YouTube channel. Or maybe you've heard me talk with Jim on the podcast. I've been on a couple videos on this channel, but let's get straight down to it. It is late over here on the East Coast right now. It's 1241. Thankfully, Bethesda kind of did me a favor. I got a little nap in tonight as they were going through their stuff and their conference was only 40 minutes long because it started at midnight. So hopefully everybody on the West Coast is excited and awake and I don't know what the hell else to say. I only have, you know, two pages of notes here. What the heck? This was like, just seemed like a complete waste of time. I have no idea what the hell was going on. The pre-show background was like a Starfield, and you know people were speculating that oh they're gonna have a game called Starfield. They trademarked Starfield, nothing of that sort. Then they launched into a Bethesda Land thing. Um, they had a, a parents and kids video, which made it seem like the conference this year would be very kid focused. And I thought that was weird because I don't think there's a Bethesda game that is rated anything but M. Unless it's one of the mobile versions or the card games and stuff like that. So I was expecting like a, a kiddie game, you know, maybe a, a kiddie platformer, a kiddie adventure game, a kiddie arcade game. And when I say kiddie, I don't mean um, aim towards the young. I just mean a game that would be rated E for everyone, right? A Sonic, a similar to how Xbox had um, the, ta the, the Tails game, the Fox game. I forget what that thing is called now. But anyway, the, uh, you know, a family platformer. I thought we were going to see something like that from Bethesda. They seem to be putting a lot of emphasis on family. And it's, instead, all it was was a weird family amusement park framing device around all of their M-rated games that are pretty fucking violent and nasty and gory and brutal. Typical Bethesda stuff. Um, so I thought that was just a complete mismatch of what the games were and... You know, they were trying to be cutesy. Like, I would have rather seen a Fallout 4-themed uh, rapper for all the games than this weird, cartoony uh, amusement park stuff. It just made it feel really weird because you would go into, you know, you'd have a cartoony thing, go into a, a violent game trailer, and come right back out. And it, it, sw it switched your, your expectations and, you know, switched your feelings a little bit, too. It was like, what, what, what am I watching? Anyway, let's get to the news. Uh, VR, two new VR games from Bethesda, Doom VFR, I don't know what the F is for, maybe it's very freaking reality or something like that, this was weird, they, they showed it with the HTC, you know, the, the HTC Vive headset in the beginning of this presentation, and, um, they had the character, you know, you had your guns, you had your two move wands, or whatever the heck HTC Vive uses, I haven't obviously used one ever, so... Um, but they had the character like looking around and selecting where they would want to go instead of actually pushing forward on the joystick. It was like, I'm going to look here and I'm going to sign that I want to move there. And then you would snap jump to there and then be able to look around 360. So that studio cannot do full movement in VR, but Bethesda Gameworks, the main studio can do it in Fallout 4 VR, which they announced. And it looks like there you can move forward and backwards and side to side and do all the other stuff you would expect to do in a full-fledged VR game. So I don't know if Doom VFR is a uh, very fine reality or very short reality game. They didn't exactly say, but they did stress that Fallout 4 VR is the full Fallout 4 experience. So there's that. Then they had the an ad for Elder Scrolls Online Morrowind, which brings in Elder Scrolls 3's world into the Elder Scrolls Online Morrowind. I don't play this game. I've never played any of the Elder Scrolls games, so my interest was waning. I think this is where I started to get a little drowsy. Um, then they talked about the Creation Club, and they made a big deal about how mods are on consoles, and you know, there's over a trillion, you know, not a trillion, but there's a bunch of mods available on consoles for everybody, not even to mention the PC. So they brought up a creators club, and this is like mods made by the Bethesda folks and other developers, and it was kind of like a stick in the face, like, you know, hey, this is mods made by real developers, not you amateurs that are out there that have been providing all this 
content and software for us that we've been making a buck off of a little bit. Uh, why even bring it up? Strange. It's just some other guided thing that if you don't like the, the amateur mods, you can have professional ones. Um, Elder Scrolls Card Game has launched last year, and we had a long trailer for that, which the basically was telling us that it's going to launch on phones this year. Hooray. I, I never played this game. Um, and there's also Heroes of Skyrim content stuff coming on June 19th of this year. Then they had a quick thing for Skyrim on Switch. So, double confirmed there. No date or anything as far as I saw. Maybe it was announced previously or maybe Nintendo will have something about it later this week. But they did have some new stuff. They pulled a Zelda amiibo over and put it on one of the Joy-Cons. And then instantly, boom, you were wearing Zelda armor in the game. As much as you could see, though, not very much because it's a first-person game, right? So you saw... Uh, a little bit of the sleeve, you saw the sword, probably the shield, and that's about it. The also interesting thing is that they integrated motion controls in with the Joy-Cons. So they took the Joy-Cons off the Switch, and they were doing like bow and arrow stuff with them. That looked kind of neat, and um, some other combat or moving things like that. So it's interesting to see that Bethesda is actually embracing the motion stuff for that platform. But we'll find out how it plays when it comes out. If that's more of a gimmick thing than it is a, a, a better way to play this, you know, what is it now? Like five, seven-year-old game? Okay, we got New Dishonored. I think it's DLC. It wasn't quite clear, but it's called The Death of the Outsider. And it looks like you're playing as a new character. I haven't played Dishonored 2, but this was Dishonored 2 DLC. It's coming out September 15th. Then they talked about Quake Champions. BJ Blazkowicz is a champion in here. They called it the original eSports since Quake was the original multiplayer PC game or something that they hooked up on a LAN party and, you know, therefore they're claiming it's the original eSport. I don't know if they had a championship back in the 90s. Who knows? Maybe somebody more versed in video games would, like your buddy Jim Afanis who owns this channel. Then we had a really long trailer for Evil Within 2. Really long trailer. Really long CG trailer. Really, I would call it the milk trailer. Like, there was a lot of milky stuff going on in this, and it wasn't quite queer. Wasn't quite clear. See, I'm so tired. Uh, wasn't clear what was going on. There was like three minutes of CG trailer, and then at the very end, they cut to gameplay, and that looked like the normal Evil Within game that came out a few years ago, um, and less of the milky stuff. So I don't quite know what they were aiming to do. Like, just show me the freaking gameplay. I don't care about the CG. If you're going to do a CG trailer, just do only a CG trailer. But don't have, you know, 80% of your trailer be CG and then have a little bit of gameplay. Like, it's coming out this year, Friday, October 13th, 2017. They made a big deal about that. It's coming out this year, so, so why not have some gameplay if you're, you know, should be getting ready to go. That's a couple months away. Um... I think the best news, this is what they ended with, Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus. If you haven't played Wolfenstein The New Order, or even the standalone DLC Wolfenstein The Old Blood, which is actually a prequel to uh, Wolfenstein The New Order, go and play those. They're great games, they're available on you know your, your Xbox One, your PS4, they're probably pretty cheap right now, I bet you can pick them up for like, you know, the DLC I think is 20 by itself. Maybe it's lower down to 10. You could probably get a combo pack for 30 or 40 bucks. Great game. Great, 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 great game. In this game, right, the Nazis won World War II because your hero fell asleep for 20 years. So thank you a lot, BJ Blaskowitz. You did not save the world. So this game seems to be the first game, Wolfenstein New Order, you were in Europe after the Nazis had taken it over. This game, you're going back to the United States. So you're walking around in like the 50s, going into a soda pop, soda jerk shop, and you see the Nazi SS guard and all those guys, the officers with their little radios, with their arm over the shoulder of two KKK guys walking down the street like, hey buddy, how's it going? Just KKK hoods right in the middle of the street. It's bizarre, weird. But that's the unsettling type of shit that this game was great about making you feel a little bit weird as you're playing in this alternate reality where things had gone crazy amok. 
but it looks like the same fantastic run and gun Wolfenstein gameplay. You can run up to somebody and double shotgun them to death, or you could take cover behind something. Uh, what I saw that was new was in the old game, you, if you got like two machine guns, you could do, uh, dual wield two machine guns or two shotguns, or uh, I think they had dual wielding pistols as well, but it was the same weapon. In this game, I saw that you could dual wield two different weapons. So you had a pistol or a machine gun in the other one, or a pistol and then a big shotgun in the other one. So that looked really cool. Uh, so you can kind of, you know, switch it up a little bit. Uh, there were gators in there. You're fighting gators. So apparently you're going all over the United States in this game. I'm excited for that. Um, I didn't see a release date, but Pete Hines came out at the very end to say that everything you saw in this conference is coming out this year, whether that means E3 to E3 or this calendar year in 2017 is unsure, didn't quite specify, but that was it for Bethesda. Honestly, I could give a crap about everything in here except Wolfenstein 2. You know, if you're just, and they, they seem to be doing, everybody seems to be this year, except for EA, of course doing the PlayStation thing that they did last year. Trailer, 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 trailer. So why, <laughs> these companies are just spending a lot of money renting out these stadiums in Hollywood and putting up these large screens just to run an entire thing of trailers. Like just rent out the Dolby Theater and have everybody roll in and roll out in between things in Hollywood if that's what you're gonna do. Don't bother with the elaborate stage show. Sure, Xbox needed that because they're unveiling a new console, but just, I don't know, it seems like a, a waste of money to put all these big things together just for the press. And I know there are fans there, like our buddy Jim, you know, he got a, a wristband for Bethesda E3. I don't know if he made it there yet or not, because it was starting right as the Fan Fest event for Xbox was ending. You'll probably find out later. But it just seems bizarre to me that they're spending a ton of money just to have people sit in an area and watch uh, trailer after trailer after trailer and then not have to come out or anything. Like literally, Pete Hines was the only Bethesda employee that walked out on screen or on stage. Nobody else. Like Xbox had some pro racers up there and three or four people. The president of EA was out there. Um, the EA press conference we had yesterday had a few people that were at least talking for a little bit in between trailers. Um, so it's very interesting to see kind of everybody adopting PlayStation's thing and I'm, I'm kind of wondering if, if this keeps going, if people react to these type of conferences the best. If in a few years we're just going to have Nintendo Direct style things where it's just pure internet, Twitch stream, don't even bother coming to E3 early. We're going to have the show open on a Tuesday and there's going to be nothing else before because everything else will be from a studio. And we're just going to roll all the trailers that you want to see. So that will be an interesting thing. But thank you all for watching, sticking with me today. And I hope this will be up in the middle of the night. So if you wake up this morning and you watch this, give us a thumbs up, give us a like, comment, subscribe to Viper Magic's YouTube channel. Jim will be back later this week, maybe, uh, with some content. If not, probably the earliest next week. But you can follow him on Twitter at Jasefat, J-A-E-J-A-S-E-F-A-T. Anyway, I'll probably put a link down there in the, in the description so you can follow his adventures there. I am your not host, Brent Casina, and I will see you tomorrow for Ubisoft and Sony. So thanks and bye-bye.